Fox Business. PIMCO's chief investment officer, Bill Gross, deals with billions in bonds, biggest bond fund in the world. But talking about what's going on in the financial markets right now, he's worried. The guy who heads the world's biggest bond fund says he's been watching firms unload their bad debt by the bushel load and warns that this could turn, quote, a mild asset bear market into a destructive financial tsunami. That's the phrase that got people nervous about this market today. Gross says the only solution is government intervention right away. But is he right? Let's ask our Bulls and Bears panel, including Scott Martin, Todd Wyman, Toby Smith and Adam Lashinsky. Uh, well, Toby, you love government intervention. What do you think of this idea? <laughs> Well, you know what he's saying, David, and, and there's a more than a shred of truth to it, is that the people who put the $480 billion of money in over the last six months into these financial guys they had enough. Basically, they're underwater, maybe, you know, 50 percent in some cases. So you can't go knocking on their door and saying, listen, would you put another $100 billion into Citibank, et cetera? So if they're not going to put the money in, who is going to put the money yeah. in? And the answer really is, let's meet us halfway. The private sector put in the $500 billion and uh, some type of resolution trust take the three or $400 billion of mortgages that the, you know, U.S. government forced Freddie Mac's Fannie Mae's to make anyway. If we meet halfway, we'll get to that trillion-dollar market that we've been talking about for a long time mm. that is where we start to get to equilibrium. Adam Lashinsky, you take this one. Uh, government intervention to save people from the problems they created? Um, broadly speaking, no, Liz. Uh, I, I think he's almost com completely wrong here. The government didn't mark these assets up, and uh, now he's suggesting that they prop them up as they've been marked down. That will delay resolution of the of the crisis, not resolve the crisis any more quickly. So, Scott, we have to clear the inventory, and that means no government action. That's right, David, and it means pain. I mean, Adam, I think, is right. I, I really think that less intervention at this point is the right move because free markets are going to reign eventually. We're going to get there faster freely than have the government come in and prop these things up again. Okay, Todd Wildman, your thought. Just like Andrew Mellon said to Herbert Hoover right at the start of the Great Depression, do nothing. Let's purge the rottenness from our system. Let them liquidate stock, real estate, everything. Purge the rottenness. Herbert Hoover didn't listen to him. You got the Great Depression. Just let us sell it down, okay? Assets will be worth something, and we'll go forward from there. No government. Yeah, yeah. Okay. let it go. Figure it out. My goodness. All yes, right. Thanks. Well, how significantly has the slowdown in consumer spending affected the stock market overall? Let's ask our Bulls and Bears panel. Scott Martin, what do you think? David, it has, but blaming the consumer for this just makes me kind of laugh here because I think you have to know, look no further than the financials on this one. I mean, let's thank the consumer for at least still spending money because nobody has any. I mean, we got this stimulus check, and instead of, to my recommendation, paying down debt service, people went out and spent more money. And so, you know, at least people are spending some money somewhere. And when it comes to back to school, I think it was actually Sandra that made it uh, a point back in July that we knew the back to school season was going to look bad. But hey, even the cool kids are wearing clothes from Walmart and Costco. So that's okay that you can still go to Walmart and get your back to school stuff there. Absolutely. And, I, and I'm, listen, I'm one who bought a ton of clothing for my daughter last year at Target. They have a ton of really cute stuff. And yes, they have Hello Kitty Sparkle t-shirts. And we know your kid's cool, Liz. <laughs> yes. And we know she's cool. So and, there you go. Everything is wearing from Target and Walmart. And it's all right. To, I have to throw it to Adam Lashinsky, the only other one with a tiny little daughter here on this panel at the moment. Um, what do you think about that? that now parents spent on the pencils and the pens and the supplies, but not on the clothing this year. Yeah, I, I can tell you, Liz, that mine doesn't need much, and she still gets plenty, as I'm, as I'm <laughs> sure you can imagine. Plenty of new clothes, that is. Look, the, the, all of these parts of the economy obviously are connected to each other, and it's, it's almost as if we were in suspended animation for a year, waiting to find out if the other problems in the economy were going to have an effect on the consumer market. Now we see, in fact, it is having an effect on the consumer market, which in turn is absolutely having an effect on other parts of the economy and on the stock market. This isn't a pretty, pi a pretty picture, and I don't see any way to uh, make it prettier right now. Well, Todd, we were talking to Jack Bogle earlier, of course, the founder of Vanguard. He said, you know, great buying opportunities out there when the markets hit as hard as it was today, and particularly the retailers. Is there any place to go in retail right now, any stocks that you would look at as beaten down enough so that they're worth buying? 
Well, you know, it's interesting, David. We're a little bit late on that. Remember, oil top had its top mid-July. And if you look at some of the retailers, J.C. Penney's, mid-July to right now, they went up 40%. If you look at Gap stores, they went up 33% in that same time period. Target up 25% in the same time period. And Walmart only up 10%. What you, you saw is investors were sort of making the switch. They saw that oil prices hit their top. They're expecting gasoline prices to come down. That's going to free up more con uh, free up more money. People go out and spend it and spend it at a JC Penney's or a Gap store, which is for the lower income people that they're a lower cost store. And you, and you look at that going forward, I think you could go with these lower cost stores, a Target, a, a JC Penney's still, a Gap stores. I think as long as oil prices keep going down, and I think oil prices go to 80 to $60, 60 to $80 sometime in the next six months. And I think you're going to see gasoline prices go down below $3. You want to be in the retail sector. Oh, probably Tobin. Target. Tobin, probably what do you JC think Penney's. about that? Well, you know, there's no question the trade has, has been. Uh, look at, well, first off, remember, uh, the retailers were the second most were betting against these stocks. So in order for someone who's short something, who's borrowed it, they have to go back and buy it. And so let's say the first 20% of any of the retailers move was simply the short covering part. The second leg of this move has been the idea that, hey, you know, if, if I'm not going to you know, be throwing money into the gas tank, I'm going to be doing retail. The, the problem with that is, is that we have a business cycle here. And this business cycle has sort of ground to a, a, a very slow point. Um, but to get the big, you know, the big pushback, the idea that we get this V-shaped recovery. If you were buying retail today thinking it's going to double, you'd have to be saying we're having a V-shaped recovery. Guys, we're not right. having it. Why? Because there's no, the financials have clamped down on so much yeah. of the spending. We don't oh, have the money Sandra, to spend. Go ahead. Real, Sandra, quickly. Real quick, I'll throw in a bright spot. It's just not the discounters. Guess was strong today. It actually finished higher. Ticker symbol GES. 1.2% yeah. gain on the day. They came out after the bell last night. They beat expectations for their quarterly earnings, and they raised their 2009 profits. Props to a Lazard Capital uh, Management Analyst last week. Actually raised his rating to a buy on that. Said it's a $51 all right. stock. Not all bad. Thanks. Some Marciano brothers there at work there. Okay, thank you very much.